<laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, here and ready to give you a breakdown on what exactly action points are. They've come up in just about most of the videos I've done so far for fixing D20 Modern. Every single class gets them, and they generally get the same amount. The only classes really so far that get anything different are the base classes and the advanced classes, and we're going to go and cover that here in just a moment. Um, action points, though, they're, uh, they're an interesting thing. I think it's one of the mechanics that they brought in for D20 Modern that actually works fairly well, and it gives the... Uh, gives all the players another avenue through which that they can actually affect the, go the course of gameplay uh, by influencing various roles and checks that they have to make. So, we're going to go ahead and just dig right on into this because uh, <laughs> I am exhausted, my friends. So, action points. Action points allow a player to have some influence over the outcome events and to serve to activate some abilities for advanced classes the character may specialize into. Each level 1 character will start with 5 action points, earning 5 plus 1 half their character level rounded down per level up, in the uh, base classes that is. Advanced classes will earn 6 plus 1 half their character level rounded down and each and every class each and every advanced class and uh, the prestige classes if those are in your games are going to have what their uh, what their rate of uh, gaining action points is listed right there in the in the description so there should be no surprises whatsoever players may spend action points to do the following things they can add to a single attack roll, skill check, ability check, level check, saving throw, or use the point to activate a class ability. A character may only spend one action point around and may do so after they total their roll, but before the GM declares what the result is. A character may not use an action point when taking 10 or 20, and what that means is, uh, for those of you who may be new, um, in a fairly relaxed, non-threatening situation, a character may choose to take 10. They basically treat their skill check as if they had rolled a 10 on the d20. Or if they take 20, they are treating their uh, the check as if they had just rolled a 20. But each instance of that takes more and more time. And taking 20 means you are taking an extraordinary amount of time, more, much more time than normal, to be thorough and go over everything. And this is usually reserved for things like uh, search checks, uh, any knowledge checks, um, even spot checks potentially could be allowed for. But things where you're crafting, things with uh, where you're making uh, making. Uh, delicate adjustments like uh, treating injuries. You can't exactly take 20 on treating injuries, especially if it's a severe trauma. So there's limitations on it, but it's a way for you to make sure you maximize your, uh, your, your chances of success at something where you're not under any kind of time constraints. Uh, activating a class ability does count as spending an action point for the round. And then, when spending an action point, 1st through 7th level characters roll 1d6 and add the result to their total roll. 8th through 14th level characters will roll 2d6 and take the higher of the two and add that to their total roll. So if you roll a 3 and a 5, you take the 5 and you add it in, you discard the 3. And that's for one uh, using one action point. And then at 15th and 20th level, those characters will roll 3d6 and take the highest number out of those three. There are some feats, however, that do affect your action points, like Action Boost, which allows you to roll d8s instead of d6s, improving your average uh, um, uh, output there a little bit, as well as uh, increasing your uh, the potential maximums you may get out of it. So it's definitely a worthwhile thing to consider. There are other feats out there as well, but this is the first one that comes to mind and is the most 
going to be one of the most likely for play, uh, players to pick up if they're picking up any of these. Um, and like I said, action points, I think is a good mechanic. I think it's an interesting mechanic. And the rate of earning the action points is enough that players are not going to feel scared or concerned about hoarding this resource. And even though technically it is a resource of limitations, the higher in level you advance, the more you're gaining. I mean, you hit level 10, one half your character. I mean, if you're a character level, if you're in an advanced class, that's six plus five. So you're getting 11 action points right there on top of whatever you've gotten from previous adventures that haven't been used up yet. So you are you can potentially rack up quite a few action points. And it's definitely good to make use of them because you want to use those class abilities, especially if you're hitting level 10 in any of your advanced classes. Um, those abilities are massively useful, even, even in classes where, well, maybe not all the classes where they weren't put together well, but you, you still want to make use of your abilities and your skill sets to the maximum extent possible, whether you're running with classes that have been fixed, adjusted, homebrewed, whatever the case may be. Um, and even if you're not activating class abilities, adding to your attack rolls, adding to skill checks, to your saves, your saves especially. I've watched so many players, either at my table or being a player at the table, where they just narrowly skirt by by the skin of their teeth, rolling action points and getting just a, enough to go over whatever the threshold may have been. So these can add, add a way out for players, but in a way they add their own level of tension because you can only spend one and, oh man, you better hope you roll good, otherwise you're just totally screwed. So yeah, it's a good ability, it's a good mechanic, and really there's not much I would consider fixing with this. I don't know that there's much to really fix here. I think this is a good thing to have and to keep overall. But those are just my thoughts. Certainly, I'm not the only GM out there. I'm not the only master of lore. And I may have it wrong. If I do, go down in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Or if you agree, but still have some things you like to piggyback in along with this, your own little homebrew rules, tips, and tricks, please share down below. More than happy to engage in the discussion. And if you did like the video, hit the like button as well and let me know. And if you're wanting more content from me to enjoy, well, there's going to be two more popping up over here. One is something the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, and all-seeing Google Rhythm has decided that you will enjoy here from the Gamer's Den. The other is just something I've cooked up recently and have it hot and fresh out of the oven, ready for you to consume and enjoy. Or, if this hasn't been your first step here so far, then why not consider subscribing? Go on down there, hit the subscribe button, become a regular member, and join us here at the Gamer's Den. But, with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your Master of Lore and Storyteller Extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.